you know, sometimes I worry that I lose, that I've lost my audience. Can I make a confession? Yeah. Because for a long time, I was thinking about writing a blog post about this, but for a very long time, if you look at all the books that I've written, it's like book on entrepreneurship, book on physical performance, book on cognitive performance and learning, the four hour chef, et cetera, et cetera. It's mostly developmental. It's about improving performance in one or more areas. And now what I've spent more and more time on, like we're spending time on it right now, is the inner game. For right? sure. And the importance of developing a keen level of self-awareness so that you can examine the contents of your, this is going to get super woo-woo for a second, or it's going to say, but the, the contents of your consciousness, right? Like wherever you go, you're carrying your mind with you. And so to develop a familiarity with that, I think is the, the, the crux skill that underlies everything else. And you and I both know plenty of achievers sure. who are miserable, who are for sure high performing, well-known people who are utterly miserable. And to me, the, the question of why is that, how can that be the case, is the question that I'm ex extremely interested in these days. And um, But I worry that having built an audience who is largely, but not entirely, kind of go, 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 rah, 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 win, 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 um, there's nothing wrong with that, but people who are trying to develop skills and, and competitive advantages and so on, that, uh, that I may lose a large por portion of those people in shifting into talking about more of these things. We'll see where it goes, but that's something that has occurred to me. And I think I'm willing to make that trade. I think I'm willing to, to take that if that's a cost of, of doing business. I don't know. So a couple of things. One, the go, go, go audience that you've built, you, this may scare them, but I mean, as someone who works with elite athletes and professional folks and CEOs and those things, what I can tell you is this is the hardest challenge you've issued. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's not about the conceptual complexity of what we're talking about. It's about unlocking performance is one thing. Mm -hmm. Unlocking people, yeah. way harder, mm -hmm. way scarier. And unlocking ourselves and creating self-awareness, um, to me, it to me, you would be remiss not to go here mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I don't know. I think like something you said when you were talking about, we all know a lot of narcissists and they love themselves, but that's actually not true. Mm. Do you know that narcissism is the most shame based of all the personality disorders? Mm. Narcissism is not about self-love at all. It's about grandiosity driven by high performance and self-hatred. It's, you know, I define it as the shame-based fear of being ordinary. And so you have, to me, you have this audience that, and I'm one of them, I mean, like, and I'm probably an outlier, I guess, and it's like me being a Rush fan, like, <laughs> where there's always outliers. <laughs> no, but, the, yeah, the audience is like 40, 40 to 50% female, but I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's uh, shifted a lot in the last handful of years. Yeah, but I think, you know, when I get invited in by a Fortune 50 CEO and, you know, and he or she says, look, we need help. We need help with the team. We need, they're not asking me to help with time productivity. Right. They're not helping me to set up a scrum or agile process for software development. They're saying, you know, we're at each other's throats. We hate each other. It's a shame-based finger pointing. Like it's all about self-awareness and changing those behaviors. And to me, you know, to me, the hard thing about this this area and your work is a lot of what I've learned from you that has changed my life has been not only effectiveness-based, but efficiency-based. Mm -hmm. And so where you can lose people with this conversation is this is not an efficient process. Yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no, I don't think there's a four-hour self-awareness <laughs> it's like yeah, i have no plans to write that yeah one. but i mean but like yeah. but people would love it if you could if yeah. you could unlock that fast but to me this is the capstone conversation for you yeah do you know what i mean like i do because what's it all in for yeah you know like i'm fit i'm winning i'm smart i'm successful and i'm on my third marriage and i don't speak to any of my children yeah. Like which you see a lot or I mean see, I, yeah. I see all the time. All the time. Yeah. Right, because I I'm going to tell you. 
not to dismiss the importance of that work, that's easier. Yeah. Yeah. It is easier. It is easier, you know, because the thing about these conversations that you and I end up having every time we sit down, or this is the second time, but both times we've sat down is what, what differentiates us as a social species is the need to be seen and known and loved and the need to see and know and love others. And no one rides for free. Like we all come into this adulthood with hard stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is true about complacency. And 95% of what I see that people call pathology is it's armor. Yeah. It's not, it's armor. It's how, it's behaviors and ways of thinking that I've developed to protect myself from being hurt. 